Hey, are you trying to learn Fusion 360 and print your own designs on a 3D printer, but you're pretty new to it, it's all kind of hard to figure out? Well, this video is for you. So today we're gonna be going through this simple wall hanger, building a brand new design, sending it to a 3D printer. So the three things you'll need, you'll need access to your computer, Fusion 360, which you can download a free hobbyist license from Autodesk and access to a 3D printer if you'd like to do that. That is optional for today. Uh, for me, I'll be running through this project with a Dell Precision 7750 that I didn't purchase, but instead Dell actually sent it to me to try out and show on this channel. And then I'll be using my Ultimaker S3 for my 3D print. So let's get started. Hey, this is Tyler back with Tech and Espresso on this channel. I make Fusion 360 tips and 3D printing tips. So thanks for joining, let's jump right in. So what we wanna build is this hook that you can fasten to the wall, can 3D print, and we can design our own. Uh, we're gonna talk just a few things about Fusion 360. Uh, first thing you can notice, I'm spinning this thing around, and an easy way to do this when you're just getting started is drag this view cube. Drag it around to get what you want. Uh, as well as click on any of the sides or faces, and it'll change to that view. And this is almost like how you adjust the camera that you're viewing your part in Fusion 360. I've spent a great deal of time making other tutorials explaining the timeline, the order of how things are built, this browser, all the different toolbars, and all the different capabilities. For today, let's just jump right in and try to, to get something built together. So um, one method we could use, if you're familiar with something like Tinkercad, where you can take a shape and put it with other shapes and kind of combine it all together to make a design. And this is great. This is really fun for young learners, um, uh, for people that are just brand new to the concept and allows you to get going faster. So it's terrific for that. But the tricky part for doing this kind of primitive method where you're putting all of these together, it gets really it gets very difficult to make anything uh, more interesting. So you can see we've got um, a simple L shape made really quickly, and that's where primitives and kind of combining shapes is awesome. Let's talk about a little bit better method uh, that's great for not only beginners, but for advanced users as well. And that's sketching the shapes you want. So when we come back and look at the part that we want to make, the first thing we want to do is sketch something like this. And it's a little intimidating with all these dimensions and everything. We can simplify it. But what we want to do is sketch this rough shape in one sketch and give it depth. And then we're kind of finished. So how do we get started? Hit this little plus sign up in Fusion, and that'll start a new file. What we're going to do is you should see the design panel or design workspace or toolbar, if you want to think of it that way. Um, and if you're in the free or hobbyist mode, some of yours will have this like plus sign or kind of upgrade button. And don't worry about that. Everything we're covering today is both in the hobbyist and free and paid version. So if we do a sketch, select sketch, we're going to pick this front plane. And what we want to do is maybe do just a series of rectangles. So I do my L and then I'm going to come up to the rectangle. So I just dragged out two rectangles. If you want to, let's go ahead and drop in one dimension to kind of get this thing uh, kind of started. So the first thing is how tall is it? And you can find your sketch dimension or smart dimension. And I'm going to select this line. Now, what I want to do is make this roughly 45 millimeters or 50. And if you'd like to work in inches, that's fine. You can come up to your document settings, or maybe you're in inches and want to work with units with me for this exercise. Select units, and you can change for this file. All right. Next, let's sketch out kind of that upper angle and then this other angle and see if we can um, put on some of those dimensions we just saw a second ago. Now, the thing we want to do is we'll sketch up at an angle 
I'll come come down. Um, it's Fusion is wanting to snap into these nice orth orthographic modes, like it's trying to snap to a 90 degree, which can be very helpful. And you can you can turn that on and off. That's a setting. But um, I'm just gonna kind of sketch this rough shape. And you don't have to complete it. We can trim that, um, or we can go past. It's totally okay if you do a little bit rougher like I did down here. Fusion will actually still um, accept it and work with it. So let's grab the smart dimension and make that eight. How about this angle? So how do you do an angle? Well, you select the line and the other line you care about while you're in the dimension mode. And we'll type in a number, one, three, five. Now what's crazy is we've, we're putting in these numbers, but if you double click, watch this, if we double click and make this 85, it updates everything. Now it only updates the things that have been defined. It looks like I haven't fully defined where that is and some of those things, and that's okay. I'm gonna hit Control Z. Okay, so what dimensions might be missing up here that could be helpful? How about the distance from this point to that point? And if you hover around, you'll notice you can maybe do vertical or the horizontal distance. So let's do a horizontal. I'll type in 25. So down below, let's make this one 40. And what if we just kind of wanted to make our own kind of variation? Like mine had um, kind of more of a pronounced uh, lower lip and maybe you don't care as much. So that's the fun part about design is we can come in and kind of make it what we want it to be. And if you'd like to use the trim command, find these scissors. We'll come in and drag it across the things we don't like. You'll see it will get rid of some of the dimensions and things if we've already put that in, and that's okay. So this, we're kind of creating this rough lip here, and we can, you know, delete lines and reconnect them. So the point is hopefully you're seeing this is easy to manipulate and kind of make it into the shape that we want it to be. So if you're following along, do a rectangle and maybe one coming off to an angle. And let's put on a few dimensions. When you're done, uh, let's look for one that is 35. This did this uh, length of line is eight. And I'd like for you should see these little T shapes, which is perpendicular. Um, if you don't have that, that's okay. Um, put in a 90 for the angle and see it's cleaning it up and making it look, uh, you know, a lot, a lot sharper. I'm going to make sure this one's eight. Well, so it, before we send a 3D printer, if you're wanting yours to be ready to go and just like this one, um, totally understand that. So you can see if I drag mine, it messes it up and that's not good. <laughs> so what we'd like to do is add the remaining dimensions that might be missing. So maybe put in an angle, make sure it's, I'm gonna to to say 135. And then what else am I missing? When I drag points, sometimes it'll tell me what I haven't defined or what I haven't figured out. So I'll make sure that that distance is eight. And I haven't specified the height of this uh, kind of lower boss. So let's make it something a little bit smaller, about 15. There we go. So if you'd like to kind of put in some of the same dimensions, go ahead. Um, you can pause the video, put these in, get this finished. And okay, once you're ready, here we go. From here, how do we give this depth? We've got our rough sketch shape. We're gonna come up to solid and hit this extrude button. Extrude is just giving it depth. Because I did a series of closed shapes touching each other, I'm gonna select each one and give it, it's gonna combine it all together and extrude it. And this is where you specify the depth of your extrusion. So I put in 15 millimeters. I could go one, you know, kind of go back or come forward either way. For the 3D printer, it's not gonna matter either way. It's looking good. All right, so maybe just a few things to clean ours up. So maybe we wanna put in a hole and we kind of want to round off some of these hard edges. Well, you could do that in the sketch or you could do a really simple thing and come up to fill it 
And this allows us to round off these edges. If I hold Shift or Command Control on the keyboard and select all of these edges that I'd like to round off and then type in, let's try maybe two millimeters for the size. See, it's rounding it all off. Come up to that sketch and I'm gonna hit this uh, little icon for visibility. And so it looks a lot sharper, adds, um, you know, lot, you know, less rough edges. So those stress concentrations go away for strength uh, that improves strength, but also just kind of Im improves the aesthetics as well. So last and final thing for the design. Ooh, not a bad idea. Hit save. And this is worth bringing up if you want to give it, um, you know, this is our hook. And what we're going to be doing is all of our files get stored in uh, the cloud database that you're given with Fusion 360. So kind of cool. All your uh, files are safe and saved to your drive, to a cloud drive, and will travel with you. So if you log into another machine, uh, you can easily access those files. So how do we get that hole in the middle? Well, um, this could be simple sketch a circle and cut it out. That's great. That works awesome. If you want to go a little more advanced and use the hole command. All right, so let's use the hole command. I'm going to click this hole icon and I'm going to pick this face. And what we want to do, we can do just a straight hole through or uh, I'll let you guys choose kind of out there what style you'd like. If you want to do a countersink for a special type of screw, that's great. Um, and you can start to toggle the settings here. So um, if you know the size of your screw, you can kind of design it off of that. Um, or if you know, um, you know, if you want to pull up some reference data from something like McMaster car, uh, it's a great strategy as well. I want to make sure that my hole goes all the way through and not a distance, but just all the way through a little simpler. And now I've got that hole. So how do we get from this into that 3D printed part we were looking at earlier? So let's send it to the slicer of your choosing, um, whether it's uh, like the Prusa slicer or in my case, Cura. Um, I'm going to select the file. I'm going to right click, choose save as STL. There's a couple ways you can get it to your 3D printer. I love this method, just especially when you have a, a couple different bodies in the file. It uh, can be very helpful. We just have one simple design. And I'm sending this hook to my computer. And now if I open or launch Cura, with Cura launch, what I'm gonna do is select the file that I just created, that STL, and I'll bring it in to your slicer. And now give it a little bit of thought. Which profile or which, um, which way should we orient this so that it's going to print best. So the face that you put against the print bed is really important or can be, can, you know, can make a huge difference. So if I select mine uh, in Cura, I'm going to just lay it down. So with this design, I think we'll get away with printing it uh, kind of a, <laughs> several different ways. I've tried it a few different ways, but um, this does seem to print the best um, for that profile against the, the ground plane. When I click slice, it's going to build that and give me my estimate and then I can send it over to my 3D printer and get that started. Thanks so much for watching. If this was helpful, post Fusion 360 tutorial down in the comments below. Hit the like button, hit subscribe. And if you didn't like it, let me know in the comments why you didn't. I'll see you guys in the next video.